Last semester, a friend of mine named Kayla underwent a terrible experience when a water valve on her water heater broke in her home. She was devastated. Her basement flooded, wet carpet, pools of water, stress. The timing was terrible. But luckily for her, she had a friend who was a DIY guy, and he was able to prevent the situation from getting worse. Not everyone has their own handyman. The situation could have been worse. Imagine walking into your home, seeing a foot of water, damp drywall, family heirlooms destroyed, wet pages from your favorite books dissolving in the lake formerly known as your home. Imagine wading through that water to shut off the mainline water valve. Imagine the vacation days needed to clean up the mess or the hours of work to remove the water, the thousands of dollars to repair the drywall. What if black mold starts to grow? Shortly after that catastrophe, Kayla came to me with a proposition. We should design a way to prevent people like her from ever having to be in that position of helplessness. We started a brainstorm. And as engineers, we thought, as engineers always think, there had to be a simple solution, right? We could figure it out. Oh, great idea. OK, we'll treat residential homes like chemical manufacturing plants or water refineries. Fantastic. We'll install the same control systems used in those massive industrial facilities into a home. It'll only cost tens of thousands of dollars and a brand new home. Turns out not so simple. Yeah, those massive industrial systems would have protected Kayla, but yeah, it would require installing thousands of wires, hundreds of sensors, measuring everything from water temperature to the mass of your number two and being flushed down the toilet. Yeah, that would have been great. No more problems. If a water pipe broke, we could have detected that uh, issue right away, shut off the water to the house, and no more problems. All Kayla needs is a small fortune spent on making her home into a supercomputer that only runs on Windows 95, <laughs> unfortunately. Well, thanks to the Internet of Things, it doesn't have to be that way. It's easier than ever to connect sensor networks. Now, you may be asking what IoT is. Well, the normal internet is a global network of interconnected computers. The Internet of Things is uh, similar in the sense that it's an interconnected network, but of things, not computers. Things which can be anything that have the ability to sense their surrounding environment, gather data, and share that data among the network. Simply put, Sensor networks now have the ability to share information easily for a low cost. Think for a second. You could have a smart fridge that gathers data on how much water you consume, then share that with you via an app, and you can start to make healthier choices, maybe. You can have a Fitbit that uh, gathers data on your sleeping schedule. It can then share that data with your coffee maker, and then right when you wake up, your coffee maker already made you coffee. Wouldn't that be nice? Farmers are starting to incorporate IoT devices in their fields as well. They're measuring variables that allow them to increase their product yield. Variables like soil moisture, sun exposure, nitrate content, carbon dioxide concentration. IoT devices are gathering all this data so that we can help solve your problems, whether you realize it or not. The Internet of Things began to grow about a decade ago, and since then, the entire industry has grown around it. With that, there's a lot of factors that have led to this. Electronics manufacturing is cheaper, thanks to China. Battery technology has improved, making more IoT devices available. Wireless communication has improved with Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, cellular communication. And this has all led to more portable and long-range applications for IoT devices. 
Finally, speed is increased among these IoT networks because of a technology known as Bluetooth-based mesh, mesh networking, which is a technology that, simply put, allows IoT devices to communicate without ever having to connect to the cloud or internet. Data on more and more things is being gathered, creating thousands and thousands of terabytes of information. One terabyte alone is two million of your favorite Facebook photos. That's a lot of data. So much data that no human being alive could possibly filter throughout all that information and find the trends and information necessary to solve large problems. The Internet of Things is one of the many factors that have led to this idea known as big data, where with more data, with more information, with more knowledge, our decisions become better. We discover superior solutions. With more data, we can solve larger problems, more complex problems, problems like Kayla's with severe property damage. Kayla wanted a way to monitor the health of her home, a technology that could alert her if anything went wrong. And that's where we come in at Homemetrics, where over the last nine months, we've spent our time developing this technology. It's not perfect, and it doesn't work fully yet, but we're getting there. We call it the Metrics Network. And it's an IoT-based wireless sensor network, which, when installed into homes, it monitors the electrical and plumbing grids. We gather data on water flow rates, temperatures, humidity. And this leads to the detection of water leaks, pipe breaks, any type of appliance malfunction. Regardless, the Internet of Things has made it a lot easier. And if Kayla were to use our system, she could have prevented all of that, saving her thousands of dollars and hours of her time, not to mention peace of mind. The Internet of Things is an amazing technology. But what's next? Well, maintenance issues still arise with this home health monitoring technology. And that's kind of a problem. What if there is a way to predict and prevent maintenance issues from ever occurring? Wouldn't that be nice? Well, with the help of artificial intelligence, it may be possible. And over the next year, we're going to try to attempt uh, to incorporate a form of artificial intelligence known as machine learning into our system, making it predictive, preventive, and proactive. Now, what is machine learning? Well, let's compare it to a computer program. You can have data given to a computer. It runs a program and outputs a result. For example, water flow rate data can be given to a computer. It runs the program and says, oh, there's abnormal water flow rates. There must be a problem or a pipe break. Machine learning is different in the sense that data and the results are given to the computer up front. And then a program is generated which connects the two, results and data. Data could be sensor network data, and results could be the history of homes which have had water heaters malfunction. And then a program is generated which connects those broken water heaters to the data. A program which then can be used in the future to predict when the heating element of one of those water heaters is going to die. Machine learning will make this all possible. And when IoT, big data, and machine learning are put together, the technological possibilities drastically increase. Amazon uses machine learning for monitoring your cursor movements, clicks, search history, and they can then learn out what you're, or learn what you're interested in learn what you want to buy, and then they can send you targeted advertisements, like they're the, your best friend who knows you really well. Google Maps can use machine learning to identify the best routes for travel. Then you can make it to your destination efficiently. Fitbit uses machine learning to learn your habits, learn who you are through health, fitness, and your sleep schedule. Now let's think back to Kayla's situation and its maintenance issues. Well, 
Imagine never having to worry about furnace malfunctions or air conditioner breakdowns, water leaks. Imagine never having to worry about any of those household issues because you receive text notifications three months in advance saying that the heating element on your water heater is going to die and that if you replace it, you can extend its life indefinitely. Well, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? Truthfully, your mind does not need to be bogged down thinking about the health of your home when instead you could be living your life in the moment, like this guy. Machine learning is an amazing technology, and it's changing our lives. When IoT, big data, and machine learning are combined, though, they can allow for all sorts of possibilities, like the rebirth of another industry, known as the smart home industry. Now, smart homes have been around for a while, but even today, they're not overly smart or cheap, but they're getting there quickly. You can pay $80,000 for a nice luxury home and install the system that does pretty much everything you could Im possibly imagine. They're expensive, though. Other systems emphasize in climate control, automated lighting, or security, but they're still thousands of dollars, and there's room for improvement. Oddly enough, no other companies have entered the residential industry with a home health monitoring technology yet. And I do emphasize yet, because within the next few years, someone will master the technology, whether that is us at Home Metrics or a competitor. Regardless, your homes in the future will have the ability to monitor their electrical and plumbing grids. But where, imagine where smart homes could go in terms of all the different types of innovations there are. Maybe you could make your home green by adding in the optimization of energy and water consumption. Maybe you could add in luxury smart home technologies that are and will be in existence, like security or the automated lighting. Maybe instead of just having a smart home, you could have a sustainable home with renewable energy in its own power grid. The possibilities are endless. IoT, big data, and machine learning have opened an entirely new world of innovative opportunities for entrepreneurs and engineers. Opportunities on the grandest scales, like world health and world hunger, global water distribution and the state of the planet. But it all starts with such easy and obvious uses, such as monitoring the health of a home. So people like Kayla don't have to spend thousands of dollars and hours of their time mopping up after a flood. Thank you very much.